Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, let's pray. I do you remember I told you something yesterday that the Lord commanded me from henceforth. We must pray this prayer on every broadcast. Praise God. Are you ready to pray? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I demand for my daily bread. I receive it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today in the area of meeting your needs. God is going to show up on your behalf. I know that because he commanded us to do what we just did. God bless you. Father, we thank you right now as I minister your word. Thank you for the anointing that is available to heal, to remove every body, to break every yoke. That is exactly what is going on in everyone watching and listening to me right now. Thank you for your spirit that will guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, why did he say don't be conformed to this world? Amplify says to this age, to the way of thinking of this age. The reason is because in, in Ephesians, he told us we, we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. So there are rulers of the darkness of this age. Are you following me? Now what do those rulers do? This is what they do. And their desire is to get everyone to accept their thoughts, accept their, their power or accept their, their preeminence over them. That's what the rulers of the darkness of this age does. So it wants to get everybody to flow in line with their thoughts. For example, death is one of the rulers of the darkness of this age. See, death is an enemy. It's an enemy of God. Death is not a tool that God uses for his children. No, it is not. The earlier we come to understand and accept this truth, the better for the church. Listen, death has never, has never been a friend of God. It is an enemy of God. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 15 says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He called it an enemy. See, why did he call it an enemy? Because it is one of, oh, thank you, Jesus. The book of Revelation tells us that even the spirit of death will be judged. He said, death and hell will give up everyone that it has taken captive. Now, that's why I tell people this. When a, anyone dies, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. When you die, you... <laughs> Lord, help us. When you die, you don't go to heaven. It is not true that when you know say he's gone to be with the Lord. He didn't go to be with the Lord. He didn't. He got snatched by the spirit of death. And he's going to be in bondage until the season or the time of his redemption of his body. So, so we just we just feel, oh, he must have gone to heaven. No. Oh, the earth has lost. But heaven has gained. No, sir. No. He's, the, the, those who are dead now, or those who are dying now, are not going to see the Lord Jesus before we do. <laughs> are you getting it? The Bible says on that day, when he shall appear, because the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then those of us that are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So they are not going to see him before us. No, they are not. 
So why are you talking like this? Because it's the truth. The earlier we come to understand this, the better because we will start raising our faith up against this enemy that is called death. So can we challenge death? Oh yes, we can. We can. Jesus has given us that authority. Yes, he's given us that authority. You know, you know, just like the Bible says, we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus. See, first, you start by seeing Jesus. Then one after the other, you begin to see all things put under his feet. All things being put under his feet. And how are all things being put under his feet today? As all things are being put under the, foot of, the feet of the church, all things are being put under the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are his body. He has overcome all the... He defeated death. Yeah, he did. He came out and says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. You know, sometimes because of all this misconception, our faith, our faith work with God is affected. So you hear believers say, I don't fear death. Anytime a death comes, I'm ready. Why should you even think of having fellowship with death in the first place? It's an enemy of God. It's your enemy. So death wants to take you as a prisoner. And he said, yeah, yeah, take me, take me to the Lord. No, death will never take you to the Lord. Praise God. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died, he never went to heaven when he died. You remember when he rose from the dead and Mary Magdalene saw him. And she wanted to, she was so excited. She wanted to grab him and say, oh, don't touch me. Why? Because I have not yet ascended to my father. Huh? If Jesus... Then the only begotten of the Father died and didn't go to heaven. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? He went to heaven alive. He had to resurrect from the dead before going to heaven. Then how, how would you now think today that people will have to die then go to heaven? No, they don't go to heaven. They don't go to heaven. That's why scripture says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, many misconceptions. You know, people think that scripture means when a saint dies, you know, all heaven goes, wow, a saint is coming home. Roll out the red carpet, my great general is coming home today. No, that's not true, praise God. There is no red carpet anywhere. It's not true. Actually, what that scripture means is this. When a saint dies, a, an investigation is launched in heaven. There must be an explanation why that saint have to die. Now, because we don't know this, when it begins to come to our senses that, hey, death, 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 we just said, eh, let it come now. I mean, I mean, let it come. I'm not, I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. You resist it with everything that is in you. You resist death. Resist the spirit of death. Resist it in any form. Resist it by sickness. Resist it by accident. Resi just resist it. It has no power over you. It shouldn't have any business with you. I don't have any business with death. Praise God. Not me, not my family. Don't talk like that. Don't talk because you don't know. No. You see, listen to me. Listen. He says, uh, I just read. He says, we present our bodies a living sacrifice unto him. Holy and acceptable. Now, as we present consciously, we do this consciously. We do this intelligently. We understand exactly what we are doing. We are not just doing a religious thing. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. So as I present my body to him as a living sacrifice, I know he's accepted it. I read to you yesterday from Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. He says, if you will obey my voice indeed. Now that is what you do when you sacrifice yourself as a living sacrifice to him you are making a commitment and say lord you know what from henceforth i'm only going to do what you tell me to do i will only do what your word tells me that's what you're saying now the moment you make that decision god says i'm going to accept you as a treasure above all the peoples of the earth now, when he does that, 
hey, guess what? You are not a commoner anymore. You have been taken out of the commoners. You are now special unto God. And if you are special unto God, hey, hey, God takes special care for you. If God takes special care for you, why then should he allow death come your way? And guess what he begins to do? He begins to guide you into all truth where death is concerned. He begins to teach you how to use your words. He begins to teach you the attitude you should have towards life. He begins to teach you all that. Why? Because you first of all, with your mind, with your decision, you have stood against death debt thank you Lord Jesus you know sometimes people go oh all of us must die who, who said that who no who said that now what's going on the ruler of the darkness the ruler behind the spirit of death is trying to get everyone to make that confession, to accept that as truth. Everybody must die. But who said that? Elijah didn't die. Enoch didn't die. See, Moses didn't die, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. So, so how do you come about everybody must die? Who, who said that? Jesus himself came and says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. The same Jesus, he said, you remember, he was talking to Martha and he says, hey, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, it's so amazing. Jesus got to Martha and says, hey, your brother will rise again. He said, yes, I know. On the day of resurrection, just like today, we comfort ourselves when, when people die. We say, don't worry, we will see him again on the resurrection day. Hey, but Jesus said to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection. Oh, I love, listen guys, listen, listen, listen. Martha says, yes, I know on the resurrection day he will rise. Jesus says, it is me that is going to raise him up on that day. But I'm here now. So what I will do on that day, I can as well do it today. And he said something. He said something. He said, anyone who believes in me and is dead, he will rise again. How will he rise again? I will raise him up again. And then he now said, now who's talking? The one who is called the resurrection. He's talking. And he says, anyone who believes in me and is alive will not die. He had to ask Martha, do you believe this? Same question he's still asking the church today. Do you believe this? Believe what? Hey, the resurrection is with us. The resurrection is with us. We don't have to start thinking, oh, oh, on that resurrection money. No, today is the resurrection money. Praise God. Yeah, today is that resurrection money. You don't even have to die. Can we believe this? Can, can the church set our hearts to this truth? And let he begin to guide. How does he guide us into this truth? I remember one day, because I've been talking to the Lord about this. You know, anytime I hear, you know, so, someone dies, I go before the Lord and say, Lord, when are we going to be made free from this thing? And then the Lord began to teach me things. And one day the Lord said, hey, never you open your mouth to cause death on someone. Don't pray death on someone. Don't cause someone with death. Don't do that. I said, why? He said, because when you do, you are confessing that the spirit of death has power over you. So you employed him or you got into a treaty with him to deal with a power or a person you couldn't deal with. So it's like you call a higher power to come and deal with this person for you. So, you know, pastors pray that prayer. Everyone who's against you will die in Jesus' name. And all of you shout, Amen. And then, and then the, someone dies and say, Wow, pastor's word came to pass. Hey, hey. You are subscribing to the authority and the almightiness, let me use that word, to the spirit of death. Listen, my time is up, but I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because you've got to get this. Let's rise up as God's children. Let's stand in the truth that God has given to us. If it is the truth, then let's leave it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.